Hi, I'm Yajaren. One thing you probably know is that Minecraft from the start has always had exploration and the discovery of new things as a core concept. It's an open world sandbox for crying out loud. There's new biomes to find, hidden treasures to dig up, and the darkest caves to explore. Over the years, new things have been added to total 800 unique items, some requiring exploring to find. But what if we changed that? What if we lost all the free space, the exploration? How would we fare? I started a world confined to a 100 by 100 border, invited some friends, made some videos on it, and then hit 100,000 subs. You guys must really like it. So today, in celebration of this milestone, we would look back at the entire world from start to killing a most dangerous boss, the problems we face by being confined, and the benefits it brings. Let's start from day one of the server. On the first day, the lovely Saturday, February 6th, we had everyone on. Me, Preston, Tyson, and Colin. If you saw this video here, you basically know what happened. We chopped trees, mined iron, died a lot, and I built this ugly house. Those weren't the only things to happen though. In that video, I had 60 seconds max to tell you what happened, and I had 6 hours of footage. And that's what's nice about these long videos, is I can tell you more instead of just jumping around. But really, the first day was just filled with tree chopping. We made sure to preserve the saplings just in case the worst happened and we lost all our trees. We found some sheep and they became our first pets. No promises they will live. Even though there was much to do, I spent a good amount of time just pacing around collecting apples and killing fish. Preston had armor before I even went underground. He even found six diamonds, three for a pickaxe, two for an enchant table, and most importantly, a jukebox. But finally, I'm going mining. Hopefully I don't run into any mob son of a- If you saw this video, you know that spawns are much higher due to how little space there is for mobs to spawn. Normally mobs can spawn 128 blocks around you, spreading them out farther, but this number was cut to at least 100, but could go as low as 50 due to the border. So I am heading back up to the surface because I don't want to die, mostly because my friends will make fun of me. And the surface wasn't even better. At night, it spawned loads of mobs, so I went around placing torches to stop that from happening. I made a little farm that would help us in our cow collecting endeavors. After running around, I was able to find some pigs, some sheep, but only one cow. Getting a cow was a high priority of mine due to how unpredictable this world is. Something could happen where we just don't get cows, which just really worried me. I looked around at the top of the mountain for a second cow below, but little did I know, it was right beside me the entire time. They will love their new home. And now, I actually went to mining. This world has a whole mine shaft under it, so that's where I spent most of my time. It sucked. On the bright side, we did find out that we had two zombie spawners and a spider spawner. Hopefully, we will use them for something useful. And with some determination, I made it out alive to build this house. I know it's ugly, but it's just the start. But if you look over to the right, you can see Colin's house. And it is much better. The second day of the server started with me mining out an area for this zombie spawner. I was hoping to turn this into some type of automatic farm. Too bad I got distracted and never finished it. Tyson and Preston had both made some houses while I was gone making mine look even worse. Also, Preston had given me an enchanted crossbow which will become my favorite item on this server. I said hello to the overpacked cows and to the rainbow sheep, they will give us good loot eventually. And then I started work on the mob farm. I already made a video out of it, so as not to bore you, here's how it went. Remodeling. Building. Begging, stealing, burning, and it's finally working. It isn't the best, but it's enough to get us some good loot and decent XP. And Tyson and Colin even used it to get every single music disc. Since the mob farm was in my house, I couldn't live there anymore, unless I liked, liked the sound of creepers. I built a new house, which looks much better and totally different from the last one. Now that that is complete, we went to the nether, but before we could, we had to wait for Colin to get back on, so I paced around in the mines. I built the portal once Colin got on, but he kept dilly-daddling around, so I just decided, who cares, I'm going in alone. It wasn't that bad, I just chopped trees like I always do. Then we went to the nether fortress. You may think, wow, that's really lucky that they got a fortress! Especially Especially with a blaze spawner and nether wart, man, I am jealous. It was not luck. That's the whole reason the border was in that area. It was to give us those resources. The most important one being wither skeleton skulls. I just really wanted beacons. Now that we collected what we needed with no important casualties, I decided to look at the piglins to see what I could barter for. I mined some gold to use, but that apparently makes them mad. Time to leave. In the nether, we found brown mushrooms, which was the last thing we needed to start curing zombie villagers. And you'll have to take my word for that we did. I lost the footage of me curing some. Who cares? We have villagers, but they're underground. But once again, who cares? That's a problem for future Jaren. I was too busy, I don't know, pacing around and moving items from chest to chest. But I paced into the right place at the right time, because right before a drowned killed Preston, I killed it, and a drop 
dropped a trident. I didn't have looting 3, it was pure luck. Probably the luckiest moment on this server. For the third time, who cares? Trident, schmide it. I know you guys are dying to see the sheep farm. I built a small pod to put sheep in, so while I was doing other things, the sheep would get sheared automatically. And that's my favorite part of the game, is building these little farms. It's so fun to see something you built get you items automatically, especially the mob farm. I'll be honest, I've put a good amount of time into just killing mobs. Oh, and hey, I finally moved the villagers to Colin's basement. With help from his water elevator, it wasn't that bad, except when I jumped down the hole, I landed on the boat. No worries, I got my items back and the worst that happened was scarring the villager, but worse will happen to them. The second villager was easier to get to the surface, with 100% less death. And now to make the villager dungeon, I mean storage center. I turned them into Fletchers as they're the easiest way to get emeralds. All I have to do is chop trees, turn wood into sticks, and force the villagers to trade. I threatened them like this. While chopping some trees for money, the villagers, they, uh, I... I actually don't know what they did, but there's more of them now. The moment they grow up, they will be put to work. This first one as a toolsmith. We barely obey child labor laws. Why do I need a toolsmith? To get a diamond axe to chop trees faster. <laughs> To pass the time, I decided to go mining for diamonds, but turned up empty in the end. It always feels like diamonds are getting rarer and rarer. No worries, the villagers are now selling tools. At first, these trades are awful. An emerald for a stone pickaxe, that's not even reasonable. But after trading enough, they'll start to sell me some diamond armor, so it's pretty good in the long run. To get prices even lower, we can kill villagers with zombies and then cure them out of the kindness of our hearts. But to do that, we need gold for golden apples. I went to the nether and killed pigmen for a good while, and I barely got anything. All that rotten flesh though will be put to good use as I can sell it to the cleric. We also had a shepherd to sell wool to, but the automatic sheep farm had stopped production due to a shortage of shears. I had run out of iron. I checked the mines, none. I checked my chests, none. I checked Preston's chest, still none. I had a solution though, but to make this more fun, we are going to play a little trivia game. Did I A, mine for it, or B, ask Colin for it? If you picked B, you are boring. I didn't ask him for it. I forced him to. Since we had a bunch of villagers now, iron golems started to spawn. This is very important because it allowed us to get iron, which we desperately needed. Uh, besides those two sentences sounding like a generic AP essay, I no longer had to hold Colin hostage for it. We had ideas of making a big iron farm, but that felt like it would take forever and would be big and in the way. And nine times out of 10, it just probably wouldn't work. So Colin made these small pods to farm golems, which honestly is very smart. The golems would see the zombie and they would walk into the lava pit trying to get them. Then underneath, hoppers would collect the iron and instant iron. These next few hours on this world, we are going to skip because all I did was grind for emeralds, but that's all worth it. I am now the most powerful man on the server. The next day started off with a pillager raid. Right before I got on, Preston had found some pillagers and got the bad omen effect. When he walked near the villagers, the raid started, but the footage corrupted. What happened is afterwards, I got up, I shocked my headphones, and then my entire computer just turned off. The only proof we have of the raid is my hero of the village effect. So to calm my nerves, I farmed some mushrooms. But wait a minute, the only reason I need mushrooms is to cure zombie villagers. And to get zombie villagers, we have to kill normal villagers. Yep, it's time for mass genocide. We first started by collecting who would go into the fun zone, as we call it. An iron golem threatened to stop our plans, but we put him in the funner zone. We also needed to put some zombies in the fun zone, and the best place to find them was in the mob farm. Well, that's what we thought would be the best, but then zombies are everywhere! Instead, we took the safer and better route of just finding one in the strip mine. While getting them both into the fun zone, the villager sweepstakes winner started to run away. With a few friendly shoves, they started to comply. It was fine, they would turn back into villagers later, so they wouldn't actually die. But when I came back, the first zombie was the only one left. So we tried again. Still no luck. The only reason this would be happening is the world's difficulty isn't hard. On hard mode is a 100% chance for them to be zombie villagers. The other difficulties, the villagers only have a chance of turning into zombie villagers. Now the server had been on hard, or so I thought. Apparently, probably when I was playing on a different world on the same server hoster, the difficulty got changed to easy. It only required two villagers to die for us to learn that, which was a sacrifice I was willing to make. Finally though, we had zombified villagers. It was time to cure them. We had the weakness potions, but we still had no gold. I couldn't hunt pigmen because last time I did, 
Yeah, a waste. I took to the mines, which was also a waste. It's fine, I resorted to the tried and true method of begging for it from Colin. I told him it was for the benefit of the people, and as always it worked. I enjoyed seeing the prices go lower, so I kept on curing. I found it was easiest to collect the gold by mining in the nether, mining this naturally spawning gold nether ore. Which, by the way, I feel like it has a different name, but I looked up nether gold ore and whoop de doo it's right there. And while reading this Gamepedia page, apparently you can smelt it down and get an entire gold ingot, which is much better than the few nuggets we were mining. Learning this after the fact sucks. Sadness over, Preston had opened his house for a house tour. This is what he's been working on this entire time, which is why I haven't talked about it much. And here it is, Preston's pub. The coolest part of it is how he used yellow beds to make it look like there was... Yeah, that drink. He has a lot of potions to sell for us. This is the first store that has been opened up on this server, and it made us ask, what are we going to use as currency? Normally it's diamonds on a normal world, but we couldn't get more diamonds. There was a set amount, and it'd be like one diamond for our entire chest of potions. For the time being, we settled on a mix between wood and emeralds as our currency. I spend a lot of time cutting trees, like a lot, like I should be studying for the ACT, but instead, I chop trees. It's a good currency though, you can get more of it, and it's something people need, especially me. Well that was a boring and overlong talk about the economy, let's go to the nether. And in the nether we are doing something special all the way at the top. Like, at the very top. By throwing this ender pearl through the bedrock, we got to the bedrock roof. Then to make a permanent entrance to the roof, we had to break through bedrock. But I forgot where to. So I had to make that trip all again to find where we need to break it. Here. This was my first time ever breaking bedrock. It was kind of stressful, especially since TNT requires sand, and sand is basically a limited resource at this point. After watching the tutorial on how to do it a few times to make sure I was really, really getting it right, we were ready. Now, I would tell you how this works, but I have no idea. Just like that, we made some permanent damage to our bedrock roof. Our next goal was now to kill the wither. To do so, we needed a few things. Maxed our armor and wither skeleton skulls. That basically means a lot of time grinding. I have 8 hours of footage. I do not want to go over everything that happened. Because 1, that's boring. And 2, that's even more boring. So I'm just gonna sum it up real quick. The best way to get maxed out gear is by trading with librarians. Down here we made a hallway for them and we got them to trade us books we needed. To get emeralds faster, I made the fun zone more efficient and made it so there could be more Fletchers inside. Once they're done, we ship them off to this room. And to get those sticks to trade? More tree chopping. Last item is Wither Skeleton Skulls. I would say something funny about this, but all we did was make a platform for them to spawn on. And then we spent our time running around, killing Wither Skeletons, and expanding the platform. I got enough skulls for one Wither, and everyone else had a few more. So it was time to fight the Wither. Now we were coming off fresh on Colin's Bedrock Room, where we fought the Wither where most of us died. I didn't because I'm cool. This led us to expect a challenge. We had Prop 4, Strength Potions, and you probably could tell where this is going going. We spawned the wither. It flew around like every other wither does, but it soon met its demise. And it met it very easily. Apparently Bedrock Edition is a lot more difficult in Java. But a homicide wasn't enough, we wanted genocide. That's another wither killed, meaning we have two nether stars. Being practical, I made two beacons. I put them in the center for everybody to use. And that's where the story closes for now. I spend the rest of eternity chopping trees to get emerald blocks for a full beacon. Does that mean that is the end though? No, we still have tons of unanswered questions. How will the four of us get along? Will we ever run out of room to build new things? And will Jaren ever stop chopping trees? That will be answered in the next video. And I know you want to see the next one, because do you want to know what happens? Colin blows up the mob farm even more.